welcome you to Innovare. Yeah, this is where we innovate. This is the podcast where changes all made. If you're not growing, then you're dying. Innovation is the key to surviving. This is Innovare, where we ain't scared to make that change and create a new way. Uh huh. If you're ready to learn and sit back and just chill, it's about to get real. This is Innovare. What's up, my guys, and welcome into another episode of the Innovare <laughs> podcast. This week I have a uh, I have a good guest in for you guys, and you might know him. He might look a little familiar to you, and that's because he looks like me, except smaller, not as tall, not as handsome. He's my little brother. His name is Christopher Edwards. He's a former college athlete turned entrepreneur. He is the current CEO of Presidential Exteriors, a three-time top 500 home remodeling company, and currently in the top 155 in the country. They've seen a 178% increase in revenue growth since they opened the doors back in 2015. Welcome into the Innovari Podcast, my little brother, Christopher Edwards. What's up, dude? What's going on? So we're going to start this by saying you're the better looking that's one? That's what it is. That's, I mean, I, that's how we're going to start this. That's, how, that's the only way that I can start this podcast. I can't, I mean, there's a reason why I wear a hat on every podcast, right? So I can't. You have the better hair that you God For gifted sure. you with better hair. Um, c- comb over Edwards over here, you know. Me, I, I have to wear a hat when I go on 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 camera. So, yeah, that's how I have to start it off. I'm taller, and I'm older. You're like a quarter inch taller, dude. Get over it. I'm at least an inch. At least an inch. At least you said little brother, not little Roy. How it's called entire high school. Yeah. Everybody- I mean, little Roy, but yeah. Well, actually, why do you think that you were so popular? It's because you had an awesome older brother who just paved the way for you, you know, and that's pretty much how you made it through high school, right? I will say you were well known. I will say that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It was fun. We had fun. And so, Troy, right? The alter ego, Troy? Troy is my alter ego, and he's a good yep. guy. He's a really good guy. So, so for all of you guys listening, so this is he is my little brother, yes, but he is an entrepreneur. And if we're being frank here, he's the more successful entrepreneur. He's been doing it longer, and his business is worth uh, a lot more than mine currently. It's an ongoing competition. You've been doing it longer, so I give you, I gave you the head start, right? So I'll catch up. Don't you worry. I didn't even have to pay him to say that either. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, yeah. So. Let's start with your story here. I mean, anyone who's listened to this podcast and has heard me rant and ramble about me and where I come from, but if anybody knows anything about stories and perception, I I go into this a lot about it's all about your perspective on life and two people that can have the exact same path and come from the exact same place. We went through the exact same education. It's not like I went to private school and you went to public or vice versa or anything like that. We literally went to the same schools, hung out with nearly the same circle of friends you know i mean you're two grades younger than me but our our friends were pretty much the same circle so i'm interested to see how your perspective of our youth and upbringing um so let me hear your story of where we come from and 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 your upbringing well i'll start by saying my friend group is actually a lot cooler than yours (laughs) so i don't know the popular kids but yeah very similar uh in age so uh yeah so growing up um it was always a very competitive atmosphere uh grew up in falls church virginia so i had a good family um i would say that uh both parents were all about equal opportunity um and they were always trying to uh give us the best opportunity. And I think that's part of the reason why they sent us to Falls Church High School, because it was, you know, a smaller high school. So uh, it would give us a better opportunity uh, in terms of sports, education, like smaller groups of classes. And, you know, it was more intimate. And that's why I think like everybody at Falls Church was uh, so close. So um, I would say, though, uh, the biggest thing about my childhood um, was probably has a lot to do, uh, with sports, the correlation, um, with the competitive, uh, atmosphere that I was raised with. I think my dad is the most competitive person I've ever met. Uh, we would come home and play, uh, ping pong. And if I did beat him, um, 
it's just well it didn't happen that often but when i did beat him it was just like rage and that's where roy got all his rage from um but uh yeah so just having that uh parenthood though of you know competitive atmosphere uh discipline uh consistency was always uh the way that i was raised and it, it really developed the type of person uh that i am today um, and you guys should definitely all listen to uh, my advice because I beat Michael Jordan uh, like five times one on one, even though it wasn't real. It felt real. Um, but <laughs> to give you a little background uh, on my drive, you know, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, played college basketball, but I used to wake up at uh, 5 a.m. before high school uh, started and I would try to make 500 jump shots a day. All okay. right. Um, so I wasn't the fastest, couldn't jump the highest or anything like that. But, um, you know, I would make sure that my shot, the things that I could control, uh, like shooting the basketball, like I would be the best at. Um, and having, you know, like parents uh, like I did, they were always like very encouraging of that type of behavior and uh, actually like really encouraged it when they probably should have told me to play baseball instead, but you know, uh, it's because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play basketball and I had that goal and that ambition there. And my parents were always there to kind of encourage that. So, uh, I, I definitely always beat Roy, uh, like in every sport. So I would say uh, every sport basketball, I will, I will, I will humbly back out of any basketball discussion. I'm not about, I, although I did play, for the high school, I, I never played for the varsity team. I got cut my senior year because I went snowboarding. Uh, Coach Tony, if you're listening, then I still remember that. Here I am at 34 remembering that I got cut for my senior basketball team. But, no, I, I mean, I, I'm with you, man. Like, we were raised in a very competitive high, uh, household. And so I always joke, and someday I'm going to do it, that if I were to write a book, it would be called Times Like Kissing Your Sister. Because – how many times did dad tell us when we were little, you know, you, you don't, you winning is winning. You don't want to lose and tying's like kissing your sister. I remember that like driving to baseball games when we were little driving to basketball games or whatever. And I mean, we, we didn't have an option not to play sports. So that was just kind of in our household, right? It was absolutely swimming diving basketball football baseball you didn't have the option not to play a sport right and i think that the reason they were so like into us having like that sports atmosphere is because you know like my father was a sales rep and it's just like a lot correlates uh with that type of lifestyle like being on time for practice like preparation for the game like having those uh things to do with sports how many times would dad you know say like uh sports directly correlates with like how you're gonna make a living like with work you know it's just like it, being on time is probably if you ask any of my employees that is like my number one pet peeve like if you're late uh there's there's gonna be consequences and it's just like that was the same thing like in sports you also had to uh learn how to get along with people and I would say, you know, me and Roy growing up in Falls Church, Falls Church is the most diverse area in the entire world. So at this point in time, like when I go to meet a customer, there's not one person that I don't know how to reach or relate with in some regard. So, yeah, and that's not a no, you're not joking when you say it's one of the most diverse places in, in, in the country or maybe the world, but it definitely in the country. I mean, there's 187 different spoken languages at our at our high school. Right. Which we were – it was our high school and another high school were written up in – I believe it was National Geographic. You can look it up. Stewart High School was the other high school, and now they're called Justice. Which is where our father went. Yeah, <laughs> Surprise. That's right, right, and that's where dad went. School. Right, and so we grew up in a very diverse area, which I loved it. I, I You know, we we grew up around different cultures, different foods, like it was great. And and you yeah, I totally agree, man. You, you learn to communicate – with everybody because some people didn't speak very good English and some people, you know, like we have a cousin who's deaf. Like it was just like you would learn to communicate with everybody. And there's so many damn people in Northern Virginia that you got to learn to communicate. A, a, yeah. You, you get a little bit of everything. You're, you know, you're going to get a little bit of like areas that are like more poverty. You're going to get like the overly wealthy. You're going to, it's, you know, it's just, it's not just race. It's like also like financially yeah. that just 
all over the spectrum. And anybody that went to Falls Church High School will like have that little connection where you're like, yeah, you went to Falls right. Church. Yeah. It's just because like everybody just meshed. It was just like a big giant group of friends that like nobody was like, oh, you're the rich group or you're this group. It's just like everybody like, you know, was just like kind of in it together. So and that that has definitely like helped with, you know, sales or work atmosphere. And like the biggest thing that we have at our at our uh, company is camaraderie. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, you know, just like everybody's getting along, everybody's competitive, but like we're, we all have the same common goals. So. Yeah. And so that, com- that competition that you grew up with and that I grew up with too, but I mean, you took it a little further. So I went, I went to college, I went to West Virginia. And so I played one year of college sports, but mine was club, right? I played one year of lacrosse, whereas you went and played college basketball. And so you saw sports at another level than, than I ever did. And so that you're you're the athletic one though, right? I am the athletic one. Well, you know, I, you know, (laughs) but that other level of of sports, right? The, of basketball and training and that next level. So how did, how did that level of athletics prepare you for entrepreneurship? Well, it's just like another like level of discipline that uh, is added to it. I mean, like, yeah, high school sports is one thing and it's it's competitive, but it's also light. It's fun. You know, it's like you're with your boys, you're, you're playing sports and everything like that. When you when you're in college, it's like the, it's the friendship like eventually comes, but it's it's more business. Yeah. You know, nobody's ever like rolling into practice on a Monday being like, yo man, like we were out partying last night. We were doing it. No, it's like, you're on time for practice and it's serious. Like the whole like tone uh, is completely different and you can just feel like that level of competition uh, is at a much higher degree of difficulty. So and the training and, and so, Oh yeah. I mean, we had, yeah, we would have weight training at 5 a.m. They'd give you a strict diet that you had to eat. Like you couldn't go outside of the things that they were requiring like to have as meals, like meal plans. And if you're injured, you have to do an hour and a half of like rehab on whatever it is, even if it's like a little ankle tweak. And it's just like the, the level of, of attention to detail uh, and the level of expectation was just like so, so much higher. And so that directly correlates – did that re- did that directly correlate into business, or did that only directly correlate when once you became an entrepreneur? Well, I wouldn't say just an entrepreneur, but like it definitely correlates to work. Yes, uh, but if you're going to go to on to talking about actual entrepreneurship, uh, yeah, that it, it it does because when you're an entrepreneur, it's sink or swim, and it's a much higher degree of difficulty no one's there to be like oh hey like you gonna wake up and go to work today or were you partying last night it's like no like there's nobody there to make sure you're doing those things you have to set your own alarm and and have to be responsible getting a good night's sleep before make sure you're taking care of your body eating properly and just like have that tunnel vision uh and and grit that it takes to succeed yeah that self uh self-discipline is huge yeah, because that's I mean, if, if entrepreneurship is nothing else, it's that you're the one who's in control. There's nobody that you can point to or blame like it's it's on you, you know, it, right. there, when you work for somebody else, no knock against working for somebody else, because that takes, you know, a special a special talents and you, you have to work sure. hard and you have to do a lot when you're working yeah. for somebody else. And that gets into entrepreneurship, which we'll talk about, because you did that and I did it for a while. Right. We yeah. both we both went that path of of intrapreneurship prior to becoming an entrepreneur, but, sure. but it all, it all correlates. And so speaking of entrepreneurship, now that we're just jumping into the next topic, the entrepreneurship that you went through, you worked for a large company, right? I mean, you didn't have dreams of going into home remodeling, right? That, that wasn't something we talked about when we were little, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you weren't, you weren't, uh, you know, setting up people's siding in high school in between basketball practice or anything like that. So, so tell me about that transition out of college and into into the entrepreneurship world. Yeah, so it goes back to like in sports, it's just like all competitive, like you got to be structured, disciplined, taking your care of your body and everything like that. So like, yeah, the, all those things are going to be transferable directly 
correlating to the way you are with work. You got to be on time. You got to be awake for work and everything like that. Um, but I think the most important part of what you're asking me is just like learning a business from the ground up, right? Um, and learning the business from the ground up before starting your own business. Cause if you just start the business, but you have zero experience, you don't really know what you're doing. You're just, it's kind of sloppy. Whereas like if you go somewhere uh, and, and you take it serious um, and it's not always about just like immediately coming and being an impacted leader to be a great leader. Sometimes you got to learn how to follow. Like you got to learn how to respect, uh, you know, other management and and uh, follow those good habits that they're teaching and not be too good to learn. If you're not coachable, then you're you're minimizing what you can actually learn and you're you're really hindering your potential there. But if you're open minded and you want to learn from other people that are doing great, I'm not saying like just because they're your manager and they're not doing things the right way to like listen to that. That's not the person I'm telling you to follow. I'm telling you to, to follow the person that doesn't really care about their title, but is just going to act as that leader. If they're going to act as that leader at all times and they're very good at that position, mm -hmm. why would you not want to cater and learn as much as possible from that person? There are plenty of people throughout my career that I paid a lot of respect to and grabbed a lot of nuggets from and learned from. I didn't just show up and be like, oh yeah, so I'm gonna deserve to be a CEO one day and I'm better than you. Right. That was never my mentality at all. In fact, like when I got out of college, uh, I, I knew nothing. And you know, in, in, in college, like I knew what college was and I knew what I had and it was just like I was there to have a good time. But as soon as that ended and I'm at work, I'm like, Okay, I'm back to the bottom. I know nothing. I need to learn. Like all the way to like you know, what a credit card is, like the interest rates, yeah. like all that kind of stuff. It's just like you got to learn everything, yeah. um, which they don't really teach in school. So now if somebody comes to me and they're like, yeah, I don't know what a credit card and interest rate is. I'm like, oh, dude, that's really bad. But, like, <laughs> but you got to just like start from the ground up somewhere and, and you got to just like be open minded and learn. You know, and if you're if you're just going to be closed minded or think that, you know, everything. Yeah, you're not going to get very far. No, no. You always have to be constantly learning. And and the world's constantly changing and constantly evolving, constantly innovating. And if you're not keeping up or trying to keep up, you don't have to know everything or even have to pretend to know everything. But you have to be getting one percent better every day. And the only way you get one percent better every day is through training and knowledge and reading or listening or podcasts or whatever it is, focusing on an area to better yourself. That could be learning a trade. That could be reading books. That could be listening to podcasts. That could be eating better. That could be you know waking up earlier. Whatever it is, you need to be pushing towards you know Christopher two dot oh, you know right. whatever it is. Yeah. And so and so that entrepreneurship that you went through, how, right? That prepares you for entrepreneurship. And so at what point did you know? You know, I'm, I'm, it's well, not a bounce. Yeah, that's a really good question. So, like, I mean, I had to work my way all the way up the ranks. It's not like I got there, listened to one person, and I was like, oh, yeah, teach me, and, and I'm good. It's just like, right, three weeks later, right? Yeah, exactly. You got <laughs> to be ready. You got to be ready to grind. You got to be, nobody's going to give you some handouts. You're not going to just poof, like, be some rich person or anything like that. Like, there is going to be sacrifice that needs to be made. And you have to make a conscious decision that that's what you want to do, you know? And so I had total tunnel vision to the point where it was almost, I don't want to say unhealthy, but like there was definitely like putting people or friends, you know, to the side a little bit when I was just focusing on work. Now, I'm not saying that friends aren't important because they are, but it's just like I had such tunnel vision that there was nothing that was there that was going to be distracting me. Yeah. And because I had that ambition, tunnel vision and discipline and taking care of myself, I was able to, you know, climb that corporate ladder. And so I, when I say I learned from the ground up, I, and grinding, I was literally knocking doors yeah. for seven months, just going door to door and just getting no to the face all day. I would talk to 120 people a day and while other people would walk house to house i would literally sprint house to house 
And I tell everybody that I interview that, and I'm like, that's definitely not what you have to do. You're right, not right. from house to house. Uh, but that's just who I was. And I looked every at everything as a competition. Like, it was a sport, like we just talked about. And it was just like total tunnel vision. And after seven months of, you know, banging doors and, and, and then learning to uh, become that manager role uh, and teaching other people how to do it, which is very satisfying, uh, I took a leap to do uh, the outside sales role, which wasn't as much as the direct grind. The degree of difficulty was higher, which means you just got to channel that energy kind of differently. So before creating like leads, going door to door is very physical, uh, like exhaustion, whereas outside sales was more mental exhaustion. Mm -hmm. But I was still up for that challenge. Like my my neighbor. Uh, was David Lupton. He's now my business partner uh, at Presidential Exteriors, but we worked together uh, at this company. Um, and he was one of those guys that just like picked everything up quick, product knowledge. And so that was one of the things I was like weakest at, you know, just like I, I don't pick up things like the first time you tell me right away. I'm not some wizard. Um, and I just knew that that was part of my weakness. So what he was really great at and I was weaker at, I was like, hey, David, you're my neighbor. <laughs> we work out together. We do all these things together. I was like, dude, teach me. Teach me what you know, and I'll teach you what I know. And it was just like we formed like this little pack together. And I would he would literally be teaching me product knowledge because that was my weakest point. And I would try to make my strongest point. And he was teaching me until like three in the morning about a window. And I'm like, yeah, an outsider looking in is just like, dude, like, did you really want to learn? about a window till three in the morning right. and i i would say the answer is yes because that is what's gonna make me great if i need to learn about this window to be great that's what i'm gonna learn it's not necessarily about the window it's about progression yeah and not enough people like understand that they're doing th things that they don't like necessarily but like that's okay but you have to understand like the bigger picture is progress and so, yeah, he would teach me about windows, siding, roofing, uh, finance, loans, like, you know, refinances, like everything that you need to learn uh, to be a great consultant. And I would just like he and he was willing to, you know, teach me mm -hmm. um, and I would just soak up that knowledge. Uh, and so I was just really good at overcoming objections. I was just like really good at like somebody telling me no. And I'd be like, huh, all right, well, I'm about to change your mind here in a second. But like, go ahead. I'll let you go. But like, so like, that's what I was good at. And so I would try to help him with like overcoming objections and what I was not as good at with the product knowledge he would teach me. So then when I was able to move up to be a manager, I, I had that full package. Like I knew product knowledge to a T. I already was gifted with like overcoming objections and scrubbing people and reading people and things like that. So, and, and if you form those two things combined, that's why I was able to not just be the best sales rep, but I was also the best sales manager uh, at the same time, which is very, uh, very hard to find. So why, so all this, so I, I have a couple questions to come out of you, yeah. but. But first, I'm going to say, why did why'd you leave? And how did you know it was time to leave? Well, um, so part of the reason why I left is it was a bought out business. OK, so that so it's just that that means there was a change in ownership. Mm. OK, and that's when I was there, which pretty much changed everything. Mm. It changed the way that the ownership cared about employees it, it it just changed the way things were run. Every everything changed. And honestly, if like all those things didn't really change, who knows? Maybe I would still even be there. But when the ownership is just like constantly thinking of you as like a dollar sign or a statistic, I mean there was twenty five hundred sales reps there. I was the seventh ranked sales rep of twenty five hundred. And I wasn't being treated that great. It was just like a statistic, just right. just another guy. And it just like it feels you get beat down by something like that. And it was also being a larger company like that. It's just like it, there's it's capped. Yeah. You know, it's so saturated with everybody wanting that same position to, to be able to move up to be a vice president there. I had to compete with tw twenty five hundred people. 
Right. And right. I had to be number one. So it's like, oh, if you're not, this uh, this person is. Mm. And so I don't mind working hard for what I need to get. But like when time and time again, like I'm the number one rep in like Maryland office and and number seven in the entire company and and still not being treated at least, you know, the way I should be. Or being appreciated, uh, right? being appreciated then i'm just like you know what i guess it's it's time to leave so is and that culture it is it, it has a lot to do with the culture and, and it has a lot to do with just ownership the way things are being run from the top down and so at that point i was like i need to make a transition uh and i want to make it a point that if i get this company to work if i make it work that i wouldn't ever do that to any of my employees I would just want to make them feel like they had a place. I want them to make them feel special. Not like just another number or statistic, that that culture uh, would be great. And I literally walked by someone's office today and I heard um, one of the marketers sitting down who just moved into sales, who got promoted. He's like, dude, I'm telling you, the reason that this company works is because of the culture. It's like that family-like atmosphere. And it's true. And that's what we've created here. And it's why people want to, you know, if you're appreciated and you have that great family-like culture, people want to work for you. They want to do those things for you. Like I said, if I had those things there, I probably would have never left. Yeah. You know, but – So but I, I, I get this question all the time, and you kind of touched on it when you were talking about David. And so you said that David – was basically the opposite of you, right? He had a lot of the strengths that you didn't have, and you had a lot of the strengths that he didn't have, and so you guys came together to form, you know, uh, this Ultron, you know, and then you moved on from there, right? So, when picking a business partner, is it yeah. important? Is it important to pick somebody who has different skills than you and thinks? Because David is, David is definitely a different personality than you, right? He he is a a little bit. I don't know. I would say he's a little bit more like me. And so you guys have that like brother headbutt type of personality. And so is that is that necessary or is there like what are the pros and cons between somebody who thinks different than, differently than you? Okay, real quick. Do you need me to like turn a light on? I feel like I'm getting darker. <laughs> you you are getting darker, but that's okay. That's the Apple products that you you buy. I just I I bring the light, right? No, I'm that's just right. kidding. Uh so yes, choosing a business partner is everything yes it's huge i mean it's you're you're getting you're getting married essentially it's like you're 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 a partnership so it's a huge commitment and the number one part of that commitment i would say is trust you gotta trust each other if you're just gonna try and backstab each other you're working against each other instead of like towards the same common goal so yeah, like if if you don't have that level of trust there, how is it? Everybody else is gonna read that, and everybody else is gonna feel that, and it's just it it doesn't work. And dude, I'm telling you, like, yes, me and Lupton are complete opposites, and we argue all the time, kind of like me and you growing up. Right. We all know who won that fight. It was yeah, me. No, well, but <laughs> but um. But yeah, dude, we fight and we fight and we fight, but we never like fight to the point where we walk away from each other and we let it affect the business. Right. We fight and we'll fight until we hash it out there together. Right. And, right. And, and, and until we come to that compromise with each other, uh, after that, we're like, yeah, we want to get a beer. Yeah, sure. Right. It's not like we just screamed at each other for the past 30 minutes to an hour. That's <laughs> but what it. It's something we just totally forget. We have that friendship in the background, and we have that that great uh, relationship, and we have such a level of respect for each other and trust for each other that we're able to do that. That's one of the biggest questions that I get from people is, you know, I fight with my business partner. Is that normal? I'm like, yeah, dude. I I fight with my business partner all the time, like all Today. the time. We all would time. scream at each other. Yeah. So yeah, and so the other side of that coin was well, the other thing that I wanted to rehash that you had talked about was this is another question that I get a lot is how much should I pay attention to my weaknesses of like what I'm not good at or should I double down at what I'm like what I'm really good at, like what I'm great at. So in your case sales, convincing somebody, right? Would you double down on that skill or would you you know, pay attention to something that maybe that you're weaker at. 
So there's, so that it's, that is a great question. And there's, there's balance to that. Mm -hmm. There's definitely balance. Like if I'm extremely weak in an area, I'm going to go to him and I'm going to be like, dude, I need to get, I need to brush up on this. Help me. And it's about helping each other. And he's like, Hey man, like I'm having trouble with this. You know, I'll be like, cool. Yeah. Like let's, let's hash it out. And we'll, we kind of just like help each other in that regard. Mm -hmm. So we're both like ready for, you know, if they mom and dad us or just like if it's needed. And however, I'm going to stick with what I'm good at for the most part. And he's going to stick with what he's good at for, for that most part. And it's kind of like we seed to one another in those areas. We're like, I mean, he's operations, I'm sales. So it's just like if someone comes to me with an operational question, I'm going to be the first thing I'm going to ask is, did you talk to David? If somebody comes with a sales you know, thing, the first thing he's going to ask is, did you talk to Edwards? Right. And it's just like, and, and we can kind of like start there. But yeah, we, of course, like I'm going to maximize and double down what I'm great at. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you let your foot off the gas in the area you're not good at. Right. You're always constantly trying to evolve and trying to improve. But you also got to know what you're good at and what you're not as good at. So Yeah, yeah you can't ignore what you're not good at. You know, but the more effort you put into the things that you're not good at is left less effort than you can put into the things that you're truly. Yeah, good I don't at. care what you say. Dude. I'm turning the light on. <laughs> that's all right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you, man. I, that's that's my philosophy as well, is that if I'm great at something, then yeah. then not only one is it in my own best interest to get better and maintain greatness in that area of field because I can monetize it. I can sell it. I can, you know continue to to climb the greatness ladder of where i'm trying to go that's one part of it the second the part ladder. the greatness ladder. The, the, sec ladder the second part though is it's better for my clients because my clients don't want me to if i'm great at something that's why they're doing business with me you right. know and so they want me to be better at it they don't sure. want me to be better at stuff that i'm not good at they don't care about that they came to me because I'm great at something, and they can they expect me to continue to be great at that thing. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, it it doesn't mean you can like slack off and not try to totally. be eventually be that expert that they come to you with that. To if you turn your biggest weakness into a strength, that's when you're great. Mm -hmm. So, but but yeah, I mean, you got to still stick to what you know, and and uh, if somebody else is gonna be a lot better at it than you then sure like or if it, of course if it's your business partner then like yeah like go at it and then i'll go at what i need to go at but like at no point in entrepreneurship do you ever get complacent right totally yeah you can't you can't stop and once you do stop like the intro says uh you die <laughs> you know that's it if you're not getting better you're getting worse and and i don't care what way you want to you want to spin it that's just the god honest truth so Let's talk about leadership methods. I got a couple more questions for you. I know we're, we're getting there on time, but yeah, that's fine. Leadership methods here, you know, I've heard a, a ton of them, and and you've already touched on one that one of those methods would be leading from the front, right? Which you've already touched sure. on. But but what are some leadership methods that that you use daily, and then or do you use any? Um, leadership methods. I'll, I, I use a lot of the methods that I'm, that I was, you know, raised with sports or, you know, what I learned at the larger company that I was before. It's just, uh, the, the method is pretty, uh, simple, you know, it's just like the, the discipline and the consistency that you, you carry every day. So I live by, uh, a quote and it's by coach, coach K. So is, I would hope everybody knows who coach K is it's like, the most famous coach ever of college basketball yep. for the number one team in the country time and time yeah. again. Uh, and so his quote is, I'd take a two-star recruit with a five-star work ethic over a five-star recruit with a two-star work ethic any day. And so that's just like, so when I interview or analyze talent of like new hires or, or anybody, it's just like, all I care about is that person's attitude and their level of drive. That's 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 what I'm looking for in somebody yeah. because I don't care if you come in and you have the world's greatest sales aptitude like that. That doesn't mean anything to right. me. It, it, it really 
it, because if you're not going to get up and try, then that level of talent is going to sink down anyway. And that person who's trying day in and day out and taking it serious as a career is eventually going to pass you anyway. Mm -hmm. And, and so I look for that discipline and consistency. And so starting presidential exteriors, that's what we lived by discipline and consistency. And we would voice it time and time and time again. And then even after our, First year in business when 96.1% of all remodeling companies fail in the first year and we didn't and we were still able to have 178% increase in revenue that year, that new year with that kickoff, we were like, cool, you know, you do it once, it's, you know, it's luck. You do it twice, it's a habit now. And we would just stress it all over again, discipline and consistency. So that's not something that's like some trick or like something crazy. It's just... It, it seems like it's common knowledge, but it's not that common. Mm -hmm. So, and, and people, people got to learn that. So, yeah, there's, so coach K, so I took an entrepreneur class in college and our textbook was coach K's biography. Right. We literally went through his biography and taught it for an entire semester. And so I, I forget what the name of the book is, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm sure you could Google it. It's a great book. And so I love his efforts too. And so what that what that quote that you're talking about is is one another one that I always say. I haven't heard that that exact quote before, but there's Emmett Smith, who was a running back for the Dallas Cowboys. His, it, his what he always used to say was hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And so it, yeah. it's exactly what you, yeah, exactly what you're saying whereas if I have somebody who's really good, but he doesn't work hard worth a damn and doesn't try to better himself, I can train somebody who has a work ethic to be great. I can train anybody to do what I do, but they have right. to want to do it. Correct. Right. You know, like I, yeah. I, I can't just I can't just take somebody off the street who doesn't care and try to. I could I could spend as much training money on training as them as possible. I could send them to every leadership academy. I could push them in front of the computer to watch hours upon hours upon videos. And if they don't care enough to better themselves, they're not going to get. They're not going to get it. It's 100% true. So I am on time here, and so I wanted to leave with this, with this last question. That was, what's a piece of advice you have for somebody who's starting out? We've both been through this. You, like I said, you started yours in 2015. We started 2016 but didn't really go hard until 2018, right? So we're relatively young. I'd like to think we're still young. Uh, and, um, but we're both past that five-year match of, of of where they say a business is no longer you know a, a a young business right like five years is kind of like the golden mark like if you make it to five years and they say hey you might you might be around <laughs> right so right. so what do you what advice do you give to somebody who maybe is in that one year maybe they haven't started yet or maybe they're a young guy who wants to get into entrepreneurship <clears throat> so i want to start out by saying a that it's never too late Okay, so it's never too late to change your attitude or try to do entrepreneurship. But what I would say is start as early as possible. Start today. Okay, so the reason I say that is because you're going to make mistakes. You are going to fail. It's part of it. Like you are going to fall on your face time and time again. And so what you need to do is you need to start as early as possible so when you do fail and you don't succeed that you have time. Time time is also money. And that's why as soon as I graduated college, I was 23 years old, I knew nothing about a window, I knew nothing about siding, I knew nothing about a roof. But I was just 100 miles per hour and I would just fail time and time again. It doesn't mean I got like fired or anything like that, but it was just like you know, you got to make sure that you give yourself enough time to recover from that failure. And after you make these mistakes, you, it's a constant learning process. So when you continue to learn these things, like you're going to learn not to make those mistakes again. So and it can start with like healthy habits or whatever. Like if you're tired of being fat, start eating properly. If you're tired of smoking, stop smoking cigarettes. But like you got to make like that decision for yourself as soon as possible because those those types of healthy habits or things like that are going to carry directly into work and just if you listen to me about anything 
start as soon as possible. If you have a goal, you need a plan, get that plan in writing and start today. Okay. And, and, and it'll give you that time that you need. So, um, I also kind of just want to do, uh, leave you guys with like this last part that like I, so every new, uh, employee that I get with, uh, my organization, I always read this to them and it's 10 things that require zero talent. Okay. And so it's number one is being on time which is what my biggest pet peeve. Number two is making an effort. Three is being high energy. Four is having a positive attitude. Five is being passionate. Six, using good body language. Seven, being coachable. Eight, doing a little extra. Nine, being prepared. 10, having a strong work ethic. All of those are 10 things that require zero talent. And just do not focus on things that you cannot control. Only focus on those things that you can control. So if you mix that with effort, you will always succeed every single time. Yeah. No, I love that. And if you guys are having trouble getting started, there is a podcast out there called the Innovare Podcast that just published a mind map where you can write down and track your goals. So uh, I know this isn't one of the questions that I went over with you in the pre-show, but so I, I write down stuff every morning into a little notebook. Do you track – how do you track what you're doing on a day? So when you say how do I track what I'm doing on a day, uh, do you just mean – so I guess like the, the way – the biggest way that I like follow that is just I have a lot of structure in my day. Yeah. Like I'm doing a lot of the same stuff like to the point where like I'm almost like embarrassed to like tell some people about my day because I'm like – nervous about because i'm like oh yeah you're gonna think i'm boring <laughs> because there's so much structure to my day and so like you just want to count like you're part of your structure throughout your day that you have do you complete what you're supposed to be doing for that day or not and every little thing you got to count as like a win or a loss yes. and you just want to continue to have a win in every single category like if you're in sales they call that a sale within a sale but it's just like, is did you win or did you lose? If you mark that down as part of the thing that you have to do that day with your structure, you count as a win or a loss. And you just want to have as many uh, have as many wins as possible and mitigate the the amount of losses. But um, you know, you just got to have that structure uh, for yourself every single day. Yeah, I'm the same way. Before I go to bed at night, I have this little notebook and I write down five to seven things that I'm going to do the next day. That yeah. if Stuff hits the fan because it always does. I can't control when clients come to me or anything like that. But I can control these five to seven things. And if I know if I have to – like right now, I have one thing left on my day. And as soon as we get off this call, I'm going to go do that one thing so that I win the day because I do not like – I have a W and an L at the top of my page. And I do not like circling the L. You know, That's Correct. that comp competitive drive in you that you have to have in order to, to win the day. So I appreciate it, man. Um, happy birthday. Appreciate it. <laughs> what are you, 33? Dude, you're not supposed to tell my yeah. age on here, bro. Well, well, if they, if they know that you're 18 months younger than me, like we said in the intro, and they know that I'm 34, then that's simple math, my friend. But enjoy being 32 for a little bit longer, but happy birthday, man. And, um, yeah. Appreciate Th it. Thanks for coming on. You still got butter fingers. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you. Uh, thank you for checking us out. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Innovari Podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and you want to listen to previous episodes, check us out at InnovariPodcast.com. We're on iTunes, Spotify. We are on nine different channels where you can listen to this podcast. You can also go to InnovariPodcast.com, listen to all episodes, and download that fancy mind map that we're talking about that will help you map out your goals. You'll be able to set your epics, as I call them, because I'm an agile nerd, in your health, wealth, and relationships. And then you'll take those out and set your daily bricks. Those are your daily actionable items so that you can win your day like we were just talking about. So, guys, thanks for checking us out. And until next time, see ya.